Today's Chiefs report is presented by RexMD. If you're struggling in the bedroom, if you need a jump start in your sex life, go to RexMD, RexMD.com slash chat. The number one leader in men's telehealth. They're going to get you on the right track without even having to leave your house. Go check them out. Link is in the comments and in the description. Coming up in a little bit here on the Chiefs report, we've got a big announcement for you guys. If you're watching live, you already know what that announcement is. But if not, stay tuned. Big announcement for this channel. All right, uh, let's get to the latest on Chris Jones as there's not really a tangible update in terms of if he could report, if they're going to give him a contract. But Chris Jones has uh, become the uh, cryptic tweet guy as of uh, late. And uh, the latest one here on Monday is ain't nobody safe. And, you know, <laughs> what does that mean? Is he saying... Hey, even an all-pro player like myself isn't good enough to get an extension. That's kind of what I'm connecting there, but who knows, right? You never know exactly what these athletes are doing or what they're saying. Here's what I will say. The longer time has gone on, my confidence meter is slipping. Like, I, I am so less confident than I was two weeks ago, a month ago, certainly two months ago. Like, I was so confident they would get an extension done before training camp. It wasn't even on my mind. I did not view this as a... Orlando Brown situation where it's like, well, it's been good, but he hasn't been great. Like, this is the best, arguably the best defensive tackle in football. I, I did not think this would be an issue at this point in time, but here we are. The, no deal has happened, and uh, he uh, has been tweeting uh, very consistently uh, his displeasure. And here's another thing I uh, found interesting. He changed his profile picture, but what really caught my eye was his uh, Twitter header photo, Frank Clark, who... He voiced very clearly that he wanted the Chiefs to make something work with Frank Clark. Uh, obviously, they cut him, but he was a free agent for a while. There was some thought maybe they'd bring him back. That was kind of his partner in crime. Now, I'm not going to sit here and blame the Chiefs for not bringing back Frank Clark because Chris Jones wanted him back. I, I had no problem with them cutting him. I was open to bringing him back for cheap, but obviously that did not happen. But I think you got to think that's him sending another message, though, right? Like, why would he put Frank Clark in his Twitter bio, bio header for no reason like that that seems notable to me look at the end of the day this is a superstar talent you are a team in a Super Bowl window you I'm not saying you just bend over to his demands but you got to get this guy secure man you just do now apparently Chris Jones wants to be the highest paid defensive tackle I can understand if the Chiefs don't want to top Aaron Donald's contract I do but you should have no reservations on making him the second highest paid defensive tackle in the league because he was the best in the league last year. Again, I'm not saying pay him 32-33, but 28 per year, 29, give him 80 million guaranteed on a four-year extension. I don't think that's out of the realm of just reasonable expectation there. And look, maybe he's asking for a four-year, 125 million fully guaranteed deal. I don't know. It's very possible. Uh, but uh, I just think... Chris Jones has the leverage. Like You look at the defensive line without him, which we're going to further discuss in a moment, it's not pretty. It didn't look good against the Saints when the starters were out there. So he's got leverage. Uh, the Chiefs have the leverage in the sense that he is under contract this year, and you know they can call his bluff and see if he'll show up week one. But do you really want to play that game when you're trying to win a Super Bowl? I'm not sure I do if I'm Kansas City. How concerned are you with this Chris Jones situation? Scale it from 1 to 10, 1 being you're not concerned at all, 10 being, you're kind of freaking out at this point. I'm at like a 7.7. .7. I mean, that number's growing for me. I'm definitely concerned, so uh, I, uh, I definitely have reservations. All right, big announcement here on the Chiefs Report. I'm stepping away as the host of this channel. I've got a great career opportunity here at Chat Sports. Do you want to make that clear? Staying with the company to uh, kind of expand uh, what I do here, do some managerial responsibilities, and uh, I'm going to attack that full steam ahead. I know a lot of you guys know I still that I cover the Bears. I'm still going to be on that channel, but uh, I am stepping away. And you guys should not be – I understand if you're disappointed that I'm leaving because we've built a great bond, but be excited. The new guy is going to be awesome. We're going to announce who the new host is in the coming days. Can't quite do that just yet, uh, but nothing's changing. Content's uh, still going to be every single day. We're still going to bring you videos, watch parties. Uh, in fact, it'll be weekly watch parties this year. Last year we couldn't do them every week. So that's awesome for you guys. Full announcement for further details to come, but uh, did want to give you guys uh, full as much of an explanation as I can at this point in time. 
All right, today's show is sponsored by RexMD. Go to RexMD.com slash chat to get started today because, fellas, do you sometimes lack confidence in the bedroom? Do you wish you could have a more fulfilling sex life? Well, you are not alone. That's why we're excited to tell you about RexMD, the online source for men's wellness. RexMD offers an easy and discreet way to get the medication you need for ED without having to visit a doctor's office. With just a few clicks, you can have your medication delivered straight to your door and at a fraction of the cost of traditional pharmacies. RexMD's team of licensed physicians will work with you to find the right treatment plan. And their medication is made in the USA, so you can trust its quality. Plus, their customer support team is available 24-7 to answer any questions or concerns that you may have. So if you're ready to take control of your sex life and say goodbye to ED, head on over to rexmd.com chat and start your consultation today. Take advantage of the best deal they've ever offered, which is up to 90% off and only pay $2 per dosage. Again, that's rexmd.com chat, rexmd dot com slash chat go ahead and get started today that link is in the comments and the description okay next up here on the chief's report should kansas city sign a defensive lineman i think the answer to this question is yes because i'll be honest i thought the Chiefs' starting defense and frankly the starters as a whole uh got worked by new orleans it's only preseason i'm not going to freak out but the front four did not have any impact on that first drive for Derek Carr and frankly Jameis Winston's first drive either both of which were touchdowns uh here's what Andy Reid had to say he was pretty disappointed in the Chiefs starters uh and this is offense and defense he said some of the guys were a little flat in the beginning you can't do that when you come to work you need to come to work ready to go and yeah I mean sure we can sit here and say yeah it's preseason it's not a big deal but you still gotta go out there and play hard and play energetic I'm not saying they didn't try but uh it seemed that New Orleans brought more energy and uh uh, wanted to play better more than the Chiefs did, and that obviously showed on the field. But regardless of effort, with Chris Jones not out there, like, you've got problems. <laughs> like, this defensive line is meh without him. Derek Nottie, Michael Dana, Charles Minihu, George Karloftis. I like Karloftis. I think he's going to be a good player. But you don't have anybody that you would even vote for a Pro Bowl heading into this season outside of Chris Jones, who's an all-pro. So... Again, that's why he's got the leverage, and quite frankly, it's why I think you need to go out and get somebody. You need to go sign, even if it's just a depth piece, just to give you another option on that defensive line, whether it's at defensive tackle or defensive end. I think you need to go that route if you are Brett Veach. What do you think? Should the Chiefs sign a defensive lineman? Type S for sign or P for pass. I think it's a pretty close to a must at this point. If there's a need on this roster, it's in the trenches on that defensive side. Now, you look at some of the defensive linemen available uh, in free agency still. Five edges, five defensive tackles. You got Jadeveon Clowney, who's still out there. He's play, taking visits with Baltimore at Jacksonville. Still remains unsigned, though. Carlos Dunlap, you could bring him back. Uh, Kyle Van Noy um, is still available. Melvin Ingram, who was here a couple of years ago in the second half of the season after the trade deadline, he's out there. Robert Quinn, uh, if you want to go interior, Chris Wormley, Akeem Hicks. And Dominican Sue, producer Rolly said before the show, he's like, and Dominican Sue is such a chief. And look, if you get Chris Jones back and put Sue next to him, Sue played well for the Eagles last year. That, that could actually be pretty nasty. Matt Ioannidis and Linval Joseph sitting out there as well. I would add one or two of these guys. I really would. Um, I think that uh, you got you to gotta, you gotta beef up that position uh, group overall. Uh, you're not going to find a Chris Jones replacement, but if he's going to threaten a holdout and a deal doesn't get done, you got to get someone better in there than what you currently got. So uh, I would certainly do just that. Now subscribe to the channel because regardless of who's the host of the show, we're still going to have daily coverage here on the Chiefs Report. We're uh, trying to get to 44,000. Round of applause. Thank you to 43,000 during our watch party. Uh, we crossed that milestone trying to get to 44 next. So if you want daily videos, if you want to stay informed with the Kansas City Chiefs, don't go anywhere. We're going to have you covered here at Chat Sports every single day, weekly watch parties. It's going to be an absolute blast. Okay, is the wide receiver competition heating up? Uh, and I would say wide receiver three and beyond, but really the whole position group, if we're being completely honest. Several receivers stood out in that Chiefs loss to, to the Saints, and some who aren't even viewed as players who – might make the team and you wonder if they should be in the mix like Nico Remigio who's had a great training camp he looked awesome four catches 71 yards Richie James looked good he had a 43 yard catch one yard touchdown as well Rasheed Rice did have a drop but 30 yards on three catches Justin Ross he looks the part man 
Uh, ran a nice little in-breaking route to beat his man for a touchdown from Shane Bouchelle. Two catches, 29 yards as a whole. But you look at how crowded this room is. I mean, you're not cutting Tony, MVS, or Sky Moore, or Rasheed Rice. Like, those four are making the team. Now, maybe Tony starts on pop or something like that, but uh, it sounds like he's trending toward being ready for week one. So let's just say you keep six. You've got Richie James, Justin Watson, uh, Nico Remigio, and Justin Ross competing for two spots. Do you keep seven now? Kansas City has some tough calls to make. I mean, just look at this depth chart one more time here. Um, I mean, even Amir Smith-Marset, Cornell Powell had a good game. Like, Crawford had a touchdown. I, he wasn't even on my radar. He looked pretty good. Like, you got like nine dudes, and you can't keep nine guys. I mean, the most you could do is seven, and even that's stretching it. So, Brett Veach, Andy Reid, they're going to have to make some tough calls. Like, I do wonder, like, do you trade one of these guys for, like, a pick? I don't know. Like, it's, it's going to be very, very interesting because I think a couple of these guys that could get cut, I know we always freak out, oh, if you cut them, they're, they're, they're going to get claimed. Usually they don't. You give them to the practice squad. I think Remigio might actually get claimed. I think Justin Watson would probably get claimed if he got cut. So you got to figure out who you want to keep and who you want to cut. So it's going to be very, very tricky over the next couple of weeks to see how this plays out. Now, with Justin Ross in particular, do you think he makes the 53? I do think he makes it. He's 6'4", 210, and he looks healthy. Why for yes, in for no. I'm going to go yes, but you make the call for us. Let us know down in the comments section.